I'm Nikki and this is Nick and we are opening Noah's Goat. Um, an odd name I know for a wine shop and licensed cafe and Nick will tell you why it's called Noah's Goat. According to legend, uh, when Noah's Ark reached dry land, uh, they allowed the animals to roam and Noah was intrigued that the goat was coming back rather frisky every night. So he followed the goat up into the mountains and discovered that he was eating a new strange fruit. Um, uh, to cut a long story short, Noah partook of the fruit himself and ended up um, being found by his sons the following morning naked with a chicken roosting on his head in the barn. Um, and essentially that Noah had discovered grapes and discovered the effect that they had on, on them when they ferment. Um, and according to the legend, that is how wine was born. There'll be more detailed version of the story um, up in store if you, um, if you care to visit. So Nick and I took over the stag um, in the old town about seven and a half years ago now. Um, we had never run a pub before. Uh, we fell in love with it. We took it over almost by accident. Uh, we took a long time learning how to make it work, what to do, how to run a pub. We made a lot of mistakes, some of which actually were happy accidents and worked very well, um, and some of which we learnt from. Uh, we had a great time there, loved it. Um, sad to leave, but um, for various reasons had to. Couldn't decide what to do next, can't retire yet. We're too young for retirement, but um, too uh, old to start anything too new and too different. So in our 60s, uh, we decided to start a wine shop, a licensed cafe. We had talked about it as one of those things you talk about a lot, you dream about, but we never actually thought we'd do it. And then we walked along George Street and saw what was Clockwork Crow um, become vacant. and it has always been our favourite shop and our favourite site. We love it, particularly the caves at the back. Um, we kind of both looked at each other and went, oh, let's go for a coffee and talk about this. And it was at that point that the dream kind of became a reality. We went to Petit Fee, we sat and had a coffee, um, and over a large slice of cake, we uh, talked about how we could make this a reality. And we actually, I mean, Nick's favourite phrase at the moment is, is it, you never die wondering um, and we just thought well, it, it, it's um, you know we've got nothing to lose really so let's give it a go so we phoned the landlord apart from our pension, apart from our pension but hey ho you know um, so we phoned the landlord we had a meeting we got the premises it kind of snowballed so it's taken us this has all taken us by surprise um, and we found ourselves then leaving the stag um, we've handed it over to two lovely chaps who want to run it in the traditional vein, keeping all the folk music and stuff. Um, and we thought we would give this a go. So we then found ourselves standing in a completely empty shop. Um, and there was a moment of panic when we looked at each other and went, what the bloody hell have we done? And then something absolutely <laughs> magical happened. All of the people we've met since we've been in Hastings, all of the people that have become good friends, some people we didn't know very well, all turned up with paintbrushes, with um, screwdrivers, with shelves, with... It was unbelievable. I cannot tell you how amazing it was. This place was full of people helping and building, and, and two weeks later we've got this. Um, a friend of ours turned up who's a sort of retired builder and helped us design and build the shelves for the wine. Uh, Nick found a second-hand bar online. Uh, we had armies of painters and um, an amazing, very talented friend of ours did the window decorations, reupholstered the bar stools. Another friend has lent us some beautiful original champagne pictures for the walls. Um, incredible just incredible that we could have done this in two weeks we're so proud uh, Nick as I say knows a lot about wine and his work with a local wine um, wholesaler to come up with a uh, what we hope is a very eclectic selection um, we're very passionate about having affordable wine so we've got wine on our shelves that's anything from 10 pounds up to 65 but if you want to grab a bottle of wine on your way home for dinner that night Ten pounds isn't too bad, and it's very good wine. Um, but over eighty percent of the range is twenty pounds or under. Mm. 
which I think is really important. But we've also got beautiful gift stuff. We've got uh, unusual stuff that if you're not sure what you want, you can come in and have a chat. And we can uh, point you in the direction of some different stuff. Nick really knows his stuff with wine and is happy to talk about it 24 hours a day, that and football. Um, I uh, know a little about wine. I'm learning all the time. Again, happy to discuss it. I'm very keen on some of the labels. Uh, we're going to do a small food offering, just some um, appetizers, some nibbly stuff to go with wines and beers. We're very uh, fond of two local uh, beer suppliers, um, uh, so we are stocking Longman and Brewing Brothers. We have good relationships with both of them and we think their product's super, so it's not just wine, it's beer, um, spirits, uh, a lot of local stuff and a lot of stuff further afield. Um, we want to make, we're going to have six small tables here, so it'd be a nice place to come, relax, have a drink, enjoy yourselves. Um, we will be doing uh, coffee and cake and so forth as soon as I get a coffee machine. I haven't quite sorted that out yet. Um, but our, our idea is to have somewhere where you can come, quite small, intimate, listen to some live music on a Saturday afternoon, have a nice glass of wine, uh, get some advice on wine if you want to buy it, buy presents, all sorts of things really. Saturday but just No, I like the idea of music on a Saturday afternoon because most places do Sunday. I think it's important with live music, you don't split the audience. So um, we thought we'd try Saturday afternoon and see how that went. We used to at the Stag do Sunday afternoons and we'd stagger that so that people could go to the Jenny and then come to us for a double whammy of music. Um, but we thought we might try Saturday afternoon and see how that went. A lot of music, a lot of opening hours, a lot of all sorts will take advice from customers, from the guys that come in, see what they want, when they want it. Um, we've got a license until 10. We're planning on starting in December quite gently and going till eight o'clock, seeing what sales come from the wine shop, what sales come from people wanting to come and uh, relax and have a drink and we'll We'll kind of take it from there, really, and a bite to eat. Yeah, so, so we haven't quite worked out how we're operating yet. We're happy to, to be adaptable. And, um, and the other thing, I guess, I want to say is we're incredibly, incredibly proud to be part of George Street. Ever since we moved to Hastings, it's always been... Um, I would, when I first found out there was an Old Town Traders Association, this is when I worked in advertising and Nick was a writer and in publishing, I used to say, I want to be an Old Town Trader because I love the sound of it, because everyone was so friendly and such a nice, supportive group. Um, never actually thought it would happen. And now I'm in George Street, everyone's been absolutely adorable. Um, and a lot of the energy, really supportive. A lot of the energy in the town has been diverted to St Leonard's in the last two or three years. And I think it's important that the old town retains, retains a bit of appeal mm. and has a, um, as much variety as possible in the, the retail and the hospitality offer. And I think one thing that's been lacking for the last few years is a is a good local wine shop um, and if we can combine that with a um, a bit of a bit of hospitality and somewhere nice for people to go then i think that's that's a a good a good thing for this this part of the town as well mm -hmm. and i think it seems to be a um, a model that's working for independent wine shops doing a bit of a bit of sales in in-house as well um, obviously with the, the the competition from the supermarkets and the big units it's quite difficult to be competitive unless you have a, a, a service-oriented business and you're offering something a bit different from, from just browsing a supermarket shelf. Mm. Well, I think as well, supermarket ranges are, are amazing now. I mean, Marks and Spencer's range is incredible. But the difference that we can offer, or a, sh a, a local shop can offer, I think, is that you can chat and offer advice, service, and yeah. yeah, absolutely, which I think is quite, quite yeah, important. You're, not, you're not, probably not going to get it from the person in the shelves up in a, mm. yeah. in a supermarket.